Welcome back everybody to another JavaScript tutorial. In today's video, we are going to be starting our discussion of the Word API that belongs to our Office JavaScript API. So in the previous videos, we've been talking and focusing mainly on Excel, but obviously the API extends across multiple applications, not just Excel, but we can access Word. Uh, I think it's OneNote or is it Projects? I think it's OneNote, OneNote. Um, and a couple other applications. PowerPoint, unfortunately, is not one of them at this point. So we're going to start talking about Word. And in this particular video, we're going to focus on the document object. Uh, we're not going to go into too much detail about certain things just because other tutorials will kind of cover that. This is kind of just more of the introduction to the topic and just getting our kind of feet wet working with the document that we're currently working out of. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the documents. And so we're gonna let a new variable called doc equal the context of the runtime environment, uh, the document. So we're gonna call the document property that belongs to our runtime context environment. And so this is the document that we're currently working out of. <clears throat> and then with this document, Let's do something really basic like insert some text. So insert some text into our document. And so we're gonna call our document. There is something called the body property which represents the body of this particular document. And then that particular property does return the, I think, what does it return exactly? Uh, it returns a word document body object. And then this one has a method called insert text. Now you can see there's table, paragraph, inline picture, HTML, all that kind of fun stuff. Let's just focus on text for right now. It takes two parameters. One is the text that you want to insert, and the second is the location that you want to insert the text. So I'm just going to copy this guy right here because he's already here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him right there, followed by that. And then I want a new line, so I'm going to put space forward slash n. And then the second is the location. So there is <clears throat> start, end, after, before, and replace. At this point, I want it at the start of my document. Uh, you know, before, it's obviously, so if you're working with like a paragraph, for example, you might want to put it before the paragraph, after the paragraph. You might want to put it at the start of the document, the end of the document. Um, you might want to replace something along that nature. So you have the replace option as well. And so this should insert some text just like that. So if I run it again and again, you can kind of see it's just inserting some text. Now that new text that we just inserted, we might want to select, right? So we might want to select the text. So select the content in the document. <clears throat> and so this would be doc dot body and then we have something called the get range method and then there's a couple options we can do so again we have whole start end after or content and so for example if I put whole I can select it and then I'll put my select method at the end and so with this it returns everything so uh, everything that belongs in the document I could do content this gives us something slightly different. Uh, what you can notice here is it doesn't select blank uh, contents, or sorry, it doesn't select a blank portion of the document body. It just simply selects the actual content itself. So pretty useful if you were working with something and I wanted to just get that information. So that definitely comes in handy down the road depending on what you're trying to do. So you have um, the whole document, you have uh, just a portion of the document or, or things along that particular nature. Okay, so that's selecting a particular range. Something we can also do is search for a particular word in our document. And so again, I'll call my doc.body property. And then there is a search method. This is a little bit more complicated, but you specify the word or the text that you're looking for. So it can be a single word, it could be an entire string and all sorts of fun stuff. And then you have all these options that you can define. So do you wanna ignore punctuation? Do you wanna ignore spaces? Do you wanna you know, match a case or something like that? 
Uh, so basically, if you have your options, you surround them by squirrely brackets, and then you give the name of the option. And then if you set it equal to true, basically what you're saying is, I that's a requirement that has to be met. So it needs to match the case. And then if I want to put another one, I have one that says match whole word. And that one, I want it to match the entire word. So it does have to match the whole word. And so with this, you do get a result set back. So there's obviously, if I'm searching for document, I'm going to get six back. Um, there's a simple way of just getting the first one. It's just called the uh, get first method. And then we put our little brackets. That returns a range object at which point you can actually select it. So you have a result set. You can get the first result, and then you can select that result. And you can see that it selected it. Now, what happens if you wanted to go through and actually you know, loop through the entire results, right? Well, usually what I would do is I would define a variable that contains all the results. And so define a variable <clears throat> that contains all the results. And so we'll say let my results equal, and then it's just gonna equal this guy right here, that's all. Because this returns that result set, perfect. And then from here, um, we can iterate through it and we can actually print out the information in our council log, but before we can iterate it, we have to load some properties about it. Uh, we have to load two. One is the items property and one is the text property. Items is going to be used for looping and then text is going to be for printing the text inside of our council. And so what we're going to do is load the properties and we'll call my results dot load and then items. Whoa, jump to the end. And then we have the text property. And then from here, that will load it. But then we have to make sure we sync those changes. So we're going to call our runtime context. And then we're going to call the sync method. And then from here, we can now start looping through the results. So loop through the results. I'm going to put a little space right there and there. And so we'll say my results. We'll call the items property and then we'll call the for each method. Uh, we're going to pass through a function, which is just simply a range object that's going to be returned uh, in each of the loops. And then we'll put squirrely brackets. And what do you want to do with that range object? Well, I want to council log the range dot text property that belongs to our range object. And if I move this over just a tiny bit, we will see that it should print it out. And you can see right here it did. It printed out each word that was found in the result set because obviously there was multiple ones. <clears throat> and then from here, um, so that's you know looking for a particular word inside of our document. I'm going to kind of put this over just again so that it's pretty clear, clear to see. Uh, what's some other things that we can do? Well, for one, we can change the style of our particular document. So we can change the actual way it looks. When I mean by styles, these guys up here, so we can change how the font actually looks. So we can change the style. And so this would again, we're gonna take the doc.body, we're gonna load a property, and then we're gonna load the style property. You might be asking, why do we have to load this property for just changing it? The reason why is because, well, I don't wanna kind of set the stage in a wrong manner, but basically because this is something that's going to kind of dynamically change all the content in here, we have to sync those changes. And so we have to load the style that it currently is, and then we have to change it. And so because we have to load it first to get the actual style and then change it, that's kind of why we're doing the loading aspect. And again, we'll call our context environment, and then we will call our sync method. And then from here, now we can start changing the styles. I'm going to do title, something that's kind of very obvious when we change it. And you can see that it changed it. And then I could also do ones like, you know, heading one, something like that if you wanted to. <clears throat> and then kind of just our last little thing, if, you know, if you're kind of curious. Uh, we can also save our document. So this is pretty straightforward. You're probably going to go like, why am I even doing this? It's just you call the save method. And just like that, it's going to save your document and you should notice right up here, it's going to change it. Perfect. And then it's saved. And really with that, that's kind of what we'll cover in this particular video. But this is a way again to kind of get us introduced to the Word API, 
you can tell that a lot of the stuff we were doing is very similar to what we were doing in Excel. We're just having to change kind of the objects we work with. And then those objects obviously have different methods and properties than the ones that uh, exist in Excel. But there is some similarity. It really just depends kind of what object you're working with. So if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So thanks again for watching everybody. We will see you in the next video.